there, there are actors and actresses who are very, very engaged with their Twitter audience. And while we may not cast a show or a film based on who those actors or actresses are, it has an enormous effect on the marketing of those shows and those, mm. and those films. And when the marketing department hears that, um, I, there's a bunch of different ones, so I, I don't want to list one in particular, but when you have somebody who's really engaged with their Twitter audience, it's of enormous benefit to the show in terms of gaining an audience. Huge, yeah. huge. But it has to be genuine on their part. They really have to do it. You can't sort of bring the actor in before the show and say, here's what it looks yeah. like. They, they, they have to have already been doing it for quite some time. Yeah, that's right. You know, people have a really um, clear sense of an authentic, to, of inauthenticity now, right, on, on platforms like Twitter. They can tell if it's, you know, the, the person's been brought in right before right. the show comes here's on Here's how there you do it. Here's you how know. you do it. They have a great sense for that. And these, these uh, actors and actresses and musicians that have a really authentic tone of voice and regularly engage, uh, they just see their their you know their 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 followers uh, explode. It also provides people with a sort of a a, re, a truly th um, you know th three dimensional 360 degree view of the person that's compelling for people, right? They sort right. of get the sense that this is a real person, and they have these other things they do in their life, and that compels them even more to uh, be a fan of the person. You you mentioned yesterday in your interview about some of the unusual conversations that are going on on Twitter yeah. today. Um, can you tell us about some of those kind of conversations? Well, yeah, it's this, it's this um, complete obliteration of these artificial barriers to communication between uh, groups of people. Um, and it's everything from, you know, I mentioned the one, I went, mentioned one yesterday between this Canadian hip hop artist, Drake, who tweeted the first million is the hardest, and then T. Boone Pickens responded, the first billion's a hell of a lot harder. And, but but, but there, there are volumes of them. You know, there are, um, um, yeah, Salman Rushdie will, 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 he has these, he'll, he'll tweet these, he calls them literary smackdowns, you know, and he'll say, this author or this author, who's better? And, you know, Margaret Atwood, another, you know, amazing writer will jump in and say, well, I loved this character in this book, was my favorite character of this person's. And so people who are just, you know, fans of literature get to see these two literary heavyweights have this very public conversation that they, they would have never seen before. They're not, you know, we're not all invited to the salon in London where Margaret Atwood and Salman Rushdie are uh, discussing these things. So it's incredible. Um, and it just happens sort of over and over again. And the chefs, you know, you'll see um, somebody uh, uh, write something about using, you know, write something about recreating one of Mario Batali's restaurants and using uh, recipes and using truffle oil and Mario Batali responding like, I can't stand, never use truffle oil, you know, I would never <laughs> use that in my recipe. And so, you know, you've got the person right there with, next to you and uh, it's incredible.